Revelation chapter 4 verse 5. Revelation chapter 4 verse 5. So, a realm is a place where there is sustained and continuous spiritual activity such that the moment you stumble into that space, you begin to experience breaking news and the result that proceeds from the decrees of God. Are you there? It's a place where power resides. It's a place where authority resides. And the doctors may say that you are barren and you cannot have any child, but when you appear before that throne where decrees result, he says to you, you shall be a matriarch of nations. And it doesn't matter the gynecologist that saw you. Maybe it's from Oxford. And he's the best among the physicians that are there. And the nation respects his opinion as far as fertility is concerned. It, all those things matter less if you have secured a decree from that throne because that's where power sits. That's where power sits. You will be afraid of men until the day you come before that throne that plays host to power. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the power. For thine is the glory. There are several things that no teacher can teach you. You will need to experience it in the journeys of prayer. I was born a stammerer. And my stammering was so bad that I was next to dumb. If you could, if, you, if, if, if there were calibrations from ability to speak to dumbness, I was on the last line, the very last line before utter dumbness. Do you understand what I'm talking about here? The calibration was terrible. It was that realm. I was wandering in that realm. And somehow, I stumbled on something that gave me my vocal power back. Please help me tell your neighbor you've been visiting the wrong places. Now, we are going to take on a journey. And we are going to explore the realms of God. <laughs> I am... Uh... I was still with my speech impediment when Jesus encountered me at the age of 13 in the company of four angels. I was before them for eight hours when he told me that he had called me to be a preacher. And I said, no, you made a mistake. That there are people in my family that have vocal power. They can preach for you. I'm not desired. Can't you see me? Can't you see me? Hallelujah. If you wanted a preacher, you would, have, you would have given him the ability to speak. You allowed me to show up here. I don't know the circumstances that manipulated my possibility and brought me here in this state. But you cannot say that you have ordained that I'll be a preacher. Because that's a contradiction. I never knew that he wanted me to experience his power. Do you still remember the, the guy that was born blind? And Jesus made, spat on the ground and made something from mud and put on his eyes. When he was asked, because I believe their disciples were undergoing training. So now they wanted to give Jesus a question that would be difficult for him to answer. This man now, we got information that he was born blind. And according to your last lecture, you told us, that sin can be the reason why Satan has authority in a certain space. Now, this man was born blind. Who sin that he was born blind? Is it is the sin his own sin or the sin of his parents? <laughs> oh, I like I like those disciples. And Jesus told them that this case he reaches back into hallowed antiquity. And he tells them the reality from the studio. That it is, this case is not occasioned by any form of sin. But this case was deliberately allowed like this so that the glory of God can be made manifest. What Jesus means by that is this. When Matt came 
in the studio in eternity, he gave him eyes. When James came in the studio, he gave him eyes in the studio. When Dina came, he gave her eyes. When that man came, Jesus said, no, go. He, he, he decided not to give him eyes. The reason why he decided not to give him eyes was because he knew that this man will be manifested on earth when he will be born and he will start his ministry on earth. He came into time to give him his own eye. that the glory of God, there are some conditions in your life, he left it from the studio. I know you, have, you, have, you, you check the gynecologist in Tulsa, Oklahoma, because you believe the one here is not up to date with the recent innovations that have come out in that field. Until you have become a tourist, you moved around, the only place you have not visited <laughs> Are the openings in heaven that you will need the journeys of prayer to visit? Because the moment you come before God, He says, Oh, it is not sin. That is the reason why you are like this. I deliberately decided to allow you to come out with this deficiency so that my name will be glorified. Any other expert you hear, other than the voice that comes from the throne, is a lie. Can we, can we find the real voice tonight? Can we find the real frequency tonight? And that's why he calls all nations to the place of prayer because he's willing to open the gates for spiritual journeys. You still remember Abraham? Abraham was called from his country. He was called from his kindred. He was called from his father's house. And he was called to navigate through spiritual pathways in search of his inheritance. When God called him, God did not show him the address of where he was going. There was no sat nav that he could use to navigate to the place that God was sending him. He said, when you begin the journey, then I'll begin to show you. You will go to the land that I will. What? Oh, you are not with me. The place he was going was a physical location, but the means by which he will go there was through spiritual senses. So when he sleeps, a portion of the map will be smuggled into his dreams. He will wake up. And say, oh. He will be able to travel for two days with the directions on, on that map. Do you know that if you are navigating that way, you cannot afford to quarrel with God because he will leave you in the wilderness? <laughs> Maya, Maya, Korea. Many of you have been left in the wilderness because you did not know that the, your hope of reaching your destination is in following his, his fall. Can we rise up and look for him? We need to find him. We need to find him. We need to find him. Our generation must find him. Our families must find him. Our continents must find him. Europe must find him. And you will be the tool, the instrument that God will use to bring many out of their wanderings into God's realm. We seek your face tonight. Are you determined to find him? Are you determined to travel, to make your journeys in the spirit? Oh, can someone unlock, unlock the volcano that is rising in your spirit? Unlock that volcano that is rising in your spirit. He calls us to become part of his journeys. There are journeys he has cut out for you. There are journeys he has ordained for you. He wants you to travel, to travel in the journeys of the spirit. Just like Abraham, there is a place he's leading you. There is a location he wants you to go, but he's going to lead you and guide you by the power of your spiritual senses. He will call you into the place where the Holy Ghost is, and he will allow you to see your path through the Holy Ghost. Come unto me, and I will answer thee, he said, and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not.
the spirit of prayer will come again upon Europe England will be consumed the sons of the Scots will feel his fire ah! his journeys begin again allow that volcano expression tonight Silomon de Babocoso Braiko Pima Zelinendo Koba Laita Ascobe Maconda Sili Paito Ke Samolande Paprako Samateli Manoria Rako Somokoria Bamalada
name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow, what a great teaching. A short message extract followed by a powerful prayer moment. I think this message opened me up and made me understand better what was written in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 that before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. God has a plan for everyone that is on the planet earth. No one is born by a mistake or by an accident. Everyone here today is as a result of the deliberate plan of God. Irrespective of one's infirmities or inadequacies, God is intentional about everyone. And those insufficiencies can't stop one from fulfilling God's desire if one opens up those weaknesses to Him, the creator of heaven and the earth. The way to open up to Him is by engaging the spiritual realm consistently through the leading of the spirit of the divine realm, which is the Holy Spirit. The divine realm is a place where there is sustained and continuous spiritual activity. There are always revelations and insights from the realm that proceed from God. Interaction with this realm strengthens one's conviction in the power and word of God. Any situation that counters the reality that exists in the realm of God is not God's plan for anyone. The only words that one is meant to take and believe are words that came out of the throne of God, which is why it is written in the book of Lamentation chapter 3 verse 37, Who is he that saith, and it cometh to pass, when the Lord commanded it not? The believer should not believe that which is not said by the Lord. Interacting consciously with the divine realm gives boldness to one, which is why Apostle Aramis said, There are several things that no teacher can teach you that you will need to experience in the journey of prayer. Some things are deliberately allowed by God in your life so that the glory of God can be made manifest. Instead of seeking help from a man or being depressed by such a situation, what you should do is to visit the studio where life came from, which is by engaging fervently in prayer. In the same way God called Abraham out of corruption, the same command has been decreed for all functionaries of the kingdom of God to be separate from the world. The separation will require keeping the focus on God alone for direction and sustenance. No believer can survive this journey without building intimacy with God because it's by spiritual senses that one will navigate through. The Lord calls you, only if you can heed. He wants to show you great and mighty things that you don't know. Your prayer now to God is that I heed. I heed your instructions. I heed your commandments. I heed myself unto you to be carried by the Holy Ghost. This is really powerful and I believe it has greatly blessed you. Listen to it over and over again until you fully juice out all that the Lord wants for you in this message. I will employ you to share this message with as many people as you can. They will be massively blessed by it. Thank you for listening to my commentary and for loving this channel. We appreciate you for liking our videos always and for always engaging our videos. I am still your brother, Olawale Ayomide Ogundobi, the Hagni of the Great Light Channel. Thank you and remain blessed. Amen.